Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Lelouch, a board certified OBGYN physician with over 30 years of clinical experience. So you have a scheduled cesarean section. This is just a little bit of information uh, uh, to, for you to know before you get to your, your surgery. I bet you're excited. And since you've had a, a, a scheduled C-section, most of the time that's because you've had a C-section before. Although just because you've had a C-section before, it doesn't mean you need another one. You might be a candidate for trial of labor, but I'm assuming that's already been reviewed with you. And now I'm briefly gonna go over what to expect. First of all, generally a schedule one's much easier uh, than an unplanned one or one where your baby was in trouble or the baby wasn't coming out. You know when it's gonna happen. You've done that before. Um, and uh, uh, for that reason, uh, the risks are really low, but um, as all surgeries, there are some general risks, and I'm going to review those for you right here. Um, this isn't exhaustive. Again, discuss your particular case with your physician, but uh, all surgeries have a risk of bleeding. If there's enough bleeding, you might need a blood transfusion. Uh, blood is very well screened, so there's a very low chance of HIV and hepatitis. You'll have to find out your latest statistics. Um, and also your iron levels beforehand will give you an understanding of how high that risk is. There's a risk of uh, infection. They generally give you some antibiotics beforehand. If you have particular allergies, make sure your physician is aware of those. That helps reduce the chance of infection. Um, there's a risk of anesthesia. Um, generally for scheduled C-section, that's a spinal, but there are, and it might be general where you go to sleep, it might be an epidural, uh, but generally it's a spinal uh, and uh, the risks of that are quite low but you will discuss that with your anesthesia provider in more detail. Um, there's also risk of injury to adjacent organs. That means when you put sharp instruments near the human body there's a chance they'll all get caught or injured uh, that wasn't meant to. It means doctors are human and errors occur. Things that can get injured are bowel, bladder, blood vessel, and baby. Um, it's really rare if anything like that happens. It's your physician will just take care of it. Um, so sorry to belabor all of these risks. I'm sure you recognize I'm giving you general information. I don't know you personally. I'm trying to help you get perspective and uh, spend some time on the general stuff here so you can spend more time getting specifics from your doctor. Okay, let's talk a little bit more. Um, generally, we want you to not eat after midnight. It depends on whether you have a morning surgery or an afternoon. There is some variation on that. Um, you might be able to drink liquids all the way up to six hours before, but you want to find out what is the recommendation for you at your facility. Uh, we'd like you to get some good rest. Sometimes taking a Tylenol PM or Benadryl the night before will help you get some rest, but you're pretty excited, so it's, it's often hard to do that. Um, uh, in our office, we also give you uh, some supplies to take a specific scrub shower uh, where your C-section are uh, the night before and the day of. Again, talk to your uh, provider, see what practices, if anything, they do. If they don't provide any of those, be sure and uh, take a shower beforehand. Um, in general, you get to have one person with you there. Again, uh, you need to talk to your provider. Uh, overall, the C-section depending on your particulars, can be anywhere from 20 minutes to two hours, but uh, um, the vast majority of my C-sections are well below an hour, and generally it takes a minute or two, but usually less than five to get the baby out. After that, if you're still anxious and nervous, the anesthesia can give you some nice relaxing medicine, but usually you're so excited to see the baby by then, and you feel so much better because once the baby comes out, uh, the, all that pressure is gone. You can breathe better and it's really uh, nice and usually you don't need it. We'll say though when you get a spinal, um, you get some numbness and your leg, it goes up higher and sometimes it feels like you're not breathing well. Rest assured you are. They've got monitors. They know that you are, but because the spinal can affect your ribs, your brain knows that you're breathing by feeling your ribs and when it doesn't feel those, it kind of thinks, hmm, am I breathing? And it can make you feel a little... Uh, anxious and nervous. Um, we'll guide you through that. Your support team will guide you through that. But the good news is that's just a couple of minutes till the baby's out and then that sensation goes away. 
okay? On the average, you'll stay in the hospital for two days if you're low risk. You can be up to four days without, uh, with minimal requirements. Um, and those are just the averages, okay? And generally, we don't want you to drive for a couple of weeks, then we follow you up in four to six weeks. Again, those are general guidelines. You will be provided, uh, or you should be provided with more detailed information afterwards and uh, when you get the discharge. So don't worry about the specifics. Um, they will be provided to you. This is to just give you a little bit of sense of what to anticipate. I know you're excited to have your child. I hope all goes well with you and I hope you found this helpful. Thank you.